In this video, we are discussing something very basic, very elementary, something that should be part of your foundational concepts, CAR versus VARCAR data type. When, in other words, fixed length data type versus variable length data type. Now, I kind of assume that you probably already know about the advantages and disadvantages of choosing CAR over VARCAR or vice versa, but sometimes these little things get ignored and you have to pay a heavy price later on after a few weeks, months or years when the data grows big, then these little mistakes will cost you very, very heavy and gives nightmares to DBAs who are dealing with performance issues. Now, I have also seen that sometimes um, designers, developers tend to ignore these things even though they know that, okay, I this is probably not the right decision to take because they don't understand the overall performance impact it can have on the engine, specifically when the data grows big. So this video will serve as a reminder in case you already know about this. So let's look at the performance implication. And uh, in case you really don't know about these data types and which one uh, you should be using when, then probably this is a good video where you will learn something new. So enough of talk, let's get into action. So I am using AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. We are creating a table called T1. This table T1 has two attributes, two columns, filler one and filler two, just dummy data. The data types for both these columns are CAR and this is a fixed length data type. So I'm specifying the length, which is 2000 bytes. The default value for both of these attributes uh, for the first one is just some A's and then for the second column, filler two, some B's. We'll discuss more on this, but first let's go and create the table. So we, uh, we get the table done, this is T1. And now let's insert 100,000 records into table one. Insert into T1, default values. So each attribute here will get A and Bs and we are inserting 100,000 records. Let's go and execute this. Now let's jump back to the schema because this is where the crux of our demo is. Now, there has to be a decision taken whether you want this to be CAR or VARCAR. We are going to come to VARCAR in a while now. So CAR here means fixed length data type. Now, if your need is to store um, the values that you know are going to be around, let's say 10 characters, 20 characters, 30, 40, or 50, then why give a length like 2000? Because this is going to be a fixed length data type. And this is the mistake that I see many developers will make because sometimes you don't understand the business data and sometimes you don't know like, or these are the questions that we ask customers as to what will be the size of the data that can get into this attribute or the max length. And let's say you know that these two attributes will definitely always not have more than 50 uh, values, let's say 50 characters, then specifying a length of 2000 bytes here, 2000 characters does not make any sense. Now, what is the storage or performance implication of choosing fixed length data type? Irrespective of the size of the data. Now, if I see here, there might be 20 or 30 characters there. Irrespective of the size of the data, the number of characters, this record will occupy 4000 bytes on the page, a SQL Server storage SQL Server data page is about 8 kilobytes, 8 KB, and this will easily take up 4 KB approximately. And uh, even though the data is just so very less, this also means that if I am storing 4K per record, then, then in each page we will have just two records that will fit. Fixed length data type has to fit in the page. This is in row data. So it cannot spill over multiple pages. It has to fit inside the page. So if each record is taking about four kilobytes approximately, then we can store just two records per page, which means 100,000 records will result in 50,000 pages. That's a lot of storage just for the purpose of demo. Now the uh, what has happened? Okay, so the records have got inserted into CAR. So let's look at what the what does this page look like, right? So let me bring down the results pane a bit. And this is what the 
page, this is just an illustration, just a basic illustration that I've made in SSMS. So my first record, right, which is A, the first value, the first column, A, and then you will have all these as blank spaces because this is fixed lint data type. This particular attribute will require that much space. Uh, space. And this is, this is where you have the second column, BBB, coming in and will also take that much space. So if you see, half of the page gets consumed by just one record. Now comes the second record, which has exactly the same structure there. So you have the A, this is the first attribute and the second attribute. And now there might be some, a few bytes left over at the end of the page because this is not probably exactly 8060 bytes. So 8192 is in terms of bytes and then there is some uh, amount of space that page SQL Server needs for the header, the footer, etc. So you are storing about approximately 8060 bytes. So about 60 bytes would be left at the end of the page, which is here. Okay, so that was the illustration. Now let's look at what has happened after we have inserted 100,000 records. So let's first verify that yes, T1 has 1,000 records. You can see there. How much space is T1 using? So let's do that computation and you will see the data size there is about <clears throat> 400,000. So this is about 400 MB approximately. That's the amount of storage space. And this, can, this will only increase drastically as you add more data. Now, talking about the number of pages, let's go and look into this DMV, DMDB index physical stats, supply the name of the database the name of the table, zero means the heap, because this is this is a heap, there are no indexes, we haven't created a clustered index, so this is, the value will be zero there, and let's go and look at page count. So observe this attribute, page count 50,000 exactly. As I explained the structure of the page, you are able to fit two rows in a page, resulting in 50,000 pages. Okay, quick recap about the data type there and the learning from there. If you know that the attribute is going to store something around 20 to 50 characters, then you got to specify that as, as the length. But if you are unsure, about, it could be 20, it could be 200, it could really be 2000, then you got to go for varchar, not char. And this is what the next part of the demo is. Okay, so now we are creating T2 which is our next table and the same structure, which is filler one and filler two. The only difference now is the choice of data type here. Instead of char, we take varchar. Let's go and create the table and we are inserting the same data there. Now insert <clears throat> 100,000 records in this as well. So while the insertion is going on, let's go and look at the structure of this table. Now, if you look at this table, just observe a bit, again, just an illustration may not be precisely the way it is in the engine or at the storage layer, but just an illustration. You have all the records being pumped into the page, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, and you can see there's absolutely no free space there and you're able to insert a lot of records on just one page. And then you have something, a few bytes left over at the end of the page. Uh, why? Because this is variable length data type that is being used, not fixed, which means that depending on the size of the data that you're inserting, it will only occupy that much space. So there are no empty spaces here. There's no empty space on the page, just a few bytes at the end. This is efficient storage. This is compact storage. And what would this mean? This will obviously mean that you are going to occupy less space uh, on the story. So table size is going to be really low and you will obviously have less number of pages. How many? We are going to see that now in a while. So while we are doing this, uh, something that I want to also show you after we do the comparison is reading data, right? So let's get this done right now itself while the insertion is going on. So I will turn on statistics io on and then we are going to do select star from t1 and then we will, are going to do select star from t2 and we'll do the comparison in a while so let's jump over to the previous window and the insertion is done let's zoom out a bit 
And what are we going to see? In table two, how many records we have? Okay, we have 100,000, all good. How much space is table two using? Variable and data type, keep that in mind. And if you look at the data size there, it is just about five MB in comparison to 400 MB that table one is consuming. What about the number of pages? Let's look at the DMV, let's ask DMV and jump over to page count there, where is page count? We have 685 pages. Now the math is very easy here, right? You can just divide um, 100,000 by 685 and you get the number of records that are being put into a single page here. And um, yes, so you have 685, that is in comparison to 50,000 pages that were being consumed by T1, okay? Now let's just do a quick full comparison between space and the page count. Okay, and you get your numbers. So this is what your numbers are, right? T1, about 400 MB and T2, about just 5 MB. And then you have the page count. T1 is taking 50,000 pages and T2 is consuming just 685 pages. Very basic, very elementary, but these are the things that get overlooked. And when you talk about SQL Server performance tuning, there are so many areas where you could improve performance. We always talk about index tuning, query tuning, baselining, benchmarking, removing the sort operator, the spelling, implicit conversion, sargability, so many different things. While all those things are good, but you also got to focus on the design of your database, the schema, the tables, the choice of data types. Now, when the data is small, you know, sometimes these things are not really evident. And this is one of the reasons why I brought up this topic today in this video, because this is exactly what we saw in a recent customer's engagement. You know, when the data size is small, uh, these things, uh, you know, do not show up so evidently, but when data goes really big and then your queries suffer, how they suffer, let's go and look at this. Let's turn on statistics IO because you want to see the reads. And this is all about storage, at least right now in this demo, but then this can have other implications as well. But let's go and look at T1. Let's just run both T1 and T2. So you are getting all the data out from T1 as well as T2. And then we are going to look at the IO performance here. And while this is running, you already know what we are going to see. We are going to see that T1 is going to cause a lot of IO and T1 will, T2 will not really cause that, that much IO. So T1, which was like scanning logical reads, you can see is 50,000 pages there. And T2 logical reads is 685. Look at this drastic IO difference there. And it was very, um, you know, evident that way also. Um, not sure if we got to notice that, but let me see. Again, this data is also not very big, but I just want to quickly check this out, okay? And again, modern hardware performance, right? Again, these things do not show up so evidently because of the blazing fast storage that we have today. You know, SSD combined with indexes, etc. cetera. So uh, we, we kind of, tend to ignore these things. But as I said, if this 100,000 was, let's say a million or 10 million, or maybe 100 million rows, then this would really heat up. This will really heat up. So this took about 12 seconds, the first one, and T2 reading just 685 pages. Very, very evident. Both are scans. This has taken one second only. So let me show this to you one again. In this laptop with SSD performance, look at a simple select statement estimated execution time or actual execution time for both the queries. Both the tables are exactly same in terms of uh, their data, which is 100,000 records. Both are being read with a scan operator here, table scan. So let's do select start from T1. Let's go and execute this. And I am going to wait for a few more seconds. Look at the counter there um, on the status bar. This is about eight seconds and over 10 seconds now. And in previous execution, it took about 12 seconds. There you go. So now you could see here, this has taken 12 seconds. You're reading 50,000 pages. And this was a lot of IO, right? At least for my little laptop here. And now if you do select star from T2, this is just 685 pages, but you're getting the same number of records, 100,000. And if you look at the execution time, this was just one second. 
very basic very elementary very foundational but yes sometimes you need reminders you need reminders that you got to look into very little things that can have huge impact later on in the project or when the database is deployed in production hope you enjoyed the video happy sql if you like the content give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos most importantly visit sqlmaestros.com there's a lot of sql learning resources out there video courses master classes lab kits ebooks blogs hands on labs and a lot more follow us on twitter at the rate sql maestros and myself a underscore bunsel last but not the least do subscribe to our newsletters see you soon in another video goodbye